Okay, so hello everyone. Sorry I cannot see the comments, but I do have my husband here and he will help me. So just pretend I'm waving and saying a personal hello to everyone. And we are just about to get start to get started. You know, just before I went live, I spoke with my nine years old and my six years old and told them that I'm nervous and this is my first live and they told me that even the greatest youtubers are uh, sometimes messing up so <laughs> i was expecting uh you will be awesome mom but <laughs> that is what i got okay so enough chit chat i hope uh, everyone who wants to be here is here and we are starting now so the first thing I want to do is to show you the original piece that I have created and some of the products that I am going to use uh, in uh, our new canvas. So I will try to show you just a bit more close uh, look. Okay. Uh, so... Um, some of the some of the embellishments and the items are gonna be completely the same but for some of them I had to improvise a bit because I'm run out of them so we have the grungy frame molds which is these two right here and we have some green flowers from the my sweet collection and the diamond collection which I will be pulling out from this box here um, we have this cute uh, how was it how does it call um, pocket watches pocket watches this one right here this is going to replace the spoon that you see here and okay so the both the spoon and the pocket the pocket watches have the capacity to hold some smaller elements and will basically serve us the same way because i'm going to fill them with some um, pearls and some buttons from the my sweet collection embellishments okay so we are starting right now i have natalie here with me today and she's going to help me with answering some of your questions regarding the products she can also link products if you want and of course if you have questions regarding the process please let me know uh, and i will answer i can't see them in my computer but my husband will help me hopefully <laughs> Christine asking what medium do you use in the molds? What medium? Oh, um, I'm using a material that is called do and dry. Uh, in the end of our live session, I can uh, write the name. It's by Christ. Okay. So, uh, we are starting now. The first thing I want to do is to... Uh, adhere the photo to a piece of chipboard. Can you see everything uh, nicely? So I'm starting with adhering the photo to a piece of chipboard. And this is the first thing I'm going to do because I want to have uh, a stiff photo and not something that can easily tear apart and just distressing it a bit to have a nicely finished look So 
so our main goal is to blend the photo as much as possible into our canvas while we are maintaining it as the focal point. That means that we will choose the same colors, patterns, textures that we see in the photo while we are structuring our composition around it. Uh, of course, in a way that will enhance it and make it pop. We will gonna we gonna do all of it all of this soon, so it's gonna be uh, more clear for you. Okay. Do you wait? Oh, it's it's yeah. out of focus. You see, Hannah is saying that uh, everything is okay. Oh, okay. If Hannah is approving, then I'm uh, approving with her heart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Hannah. Okay. Okay, so before we are starting our composition, the first step is to examine the photo and to choose where to place it. And the basic tip I can share with you is that you want to have two thirds of your surface um, covered and one third clean. And this way you will not get a too busy piece and it will also look full enough and not too empty. So let's start with the background. I am ripping the paper, but just before that I want to measure it and have it exactly on the canvas. So I'm just using my fingernails like this, like so, to mark where I want to cut it. And then I'm uh, cutting the axis. By the way, this paper is from the, um, how does it call, Midnight Garden Collection because I don't have any more of the green paper from the My Sweet Collection, but it will, it's almost the same color, same shades. Okay, we are good. So, I want to place it, as I told you, um, oh, I haven't told you. Um, I want to place it just uh, anywhere but the middle. <laughs> this is uh, extremely important. We don't want to have it in the middle because uh, we want our eye to flow around the composition and not to get stuck right in the middle. So it's gonna be approximately here. And I can see that the woman is um, looking to this direction, if you can see. You see that she's looking towards something. So I want to try and provide her uh, with this open space here to look at. So this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna rip it. Don't be afraid, just do it. No. And you see, only by ripping it, we are um, we have this nice, uh, interesting background that we are creating. And because I'm gonna um, stretch her dress to here, I'm gonna rip here also. It's gonna be interesting. like so. Okay, so now we can adhere the paper. I'm making sure to put enough glue um, in the edges of the canvas because we don't want it, the paper to, to lift. It looks um, unprofessional <laughs> or something. But I'm trying not to put glue here because if you can see here, I want to achieve this layer, the volume look you see here. So if I will add glue here, it will just be flat and 
um, be stuck to the canvas and I don't want that so I will not put glue around the edges do you see any questions or something mm -hmm. no hearts love something <laughs> Now we have this, uh, we can just lift it a bit to get the feeling, yeah, like so, and again I'm going to distress the edges uh, to make it, uh, to blend it with the canvas. I have a lot of messages, see, maybe you want somebody wants to know how to get in, so thank you. Oh my god, it's 9.25. I need to take things, speed things up. Okay, so you can see when I'm doing this, it takes out the... It makes it just a bit more grungy and rough and interesting, okay? And also it's b it, it blends the paper together with the canvas. Okay. Okay, that's it. And also to make it just a bit more layered, I'm gonna rip some of this paper and stack it inside. don't have to take a whole 12 by 12 paper to do so like I did here <laughs> you can just use your leftovers we even have some men from Uganda Uganda hmm Elad I hope you are creating with me and not just looking. Show me tomorrow your piece. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's see. Okay, it looks good. Hmm, where is my photo? Ah, here it is. Yeah, I want just want to check it out. Yeah, okay. Okay, one more minute so I will finish with the paper and we can proceed. By the way, if we we would have add glue to the edges right here, we wouldn't be able to uh, put you know, a, another piece of paper is inside. So it's also important. It's actually important in each and every element that you are adhering, not to use too much glue all around the element. We always want to keep it volumed. We, alwa we always want to have the opportunity to stack more items, more el elements beneath it. So always use just enough glue and not uh, do, don't cover all the surface this is the 
a good tip in general. Very good night to Australia, to go to bed. To? To bed. Yeah. In Australia. What is the time now in Australia? It's almost morning. Oh, who's watching? Angela was watching. <laughs> Hi, Angela. Should go to bed. <laughs> okay, now we can continue. This is how it's gonna look. Okay. So, um, now what we are going to do is now that we know where the photo is going to be placed and we created an interesting structure in the background we can start and play with the composition we want to complement the photo and we want to try to elongate or to stretch it if you will into the canvas now if you feel lost in the beginning of this process try to choose the bigger element first like i'm doing here with the frame molds and the bigger flowers first and slowly build your way into the more delicate items it it will help you okay ah, i forgot to take some flowers out i'm going to choose the green ones as i told you okay let's see Okay, so I'm starting with the bigger elements first and the bigger flowers first, and then I will slowly add the smaller ones. Thinking. Okay. Something like so, this one is too big. Any questions or something? Do you see? No. Okay. Okay, my <laughs> Florida. Hello, hello, hello to you too. Canada. My secret weapon um, that I'm about to share with you is these stems and leaves. And I, I take those out of the, first of all, out of the flower packages. You know, you always get some leaves and stems and things like that. So I always put them in one place but also also i like to take the you know like in the home decor stores they are selling these fake fake leaves that you put in the vase in your house that i then i i i found it is very useful to just buy those they are not expensive and just i'm tearing them and using them in my project so yeah, I'm going to add some leaves here also. Pennsylvania. Yeah. <laughs> Hi Pennsylvania. Names, I want to know names. Well. Probably there are so many uh, crafters that I know and like and I can't even say hi because I don't know who is here. Monica so. from uh, Canada, Isabel from Pennsylvania. So me, Christine from Norway. Mm. That's better. Oh, I now I want to share with you this process. Now it's very nice. Uh, like I told you before, I'm gonna take this um, pocket watch watches, pocket watches from Finnaber uh, Mechanicals, and I'm going to fill it with some smaller elements like. And these buttons right here 
and with some pearls I'm gonna do it now because I want it to get dry enough for the next step I'm going to choose the green pearls okay and for this part i am going to use let me just move it a bit here oh my god i have such a messy table i hope you can understand anything okay um so what i want to do is to put just uh, some heavy body gel a heavy body gel yeah and let's see what i have here okay. okay so i'm going to add some <coughs> medium gel gel generously into the watch maybe they can see when i do like this it's it's good uh, or should i leave it down you see it nicely mm. yes this one is bigger okay, okay. so generously i'm just adding some medium gel inside i'm wiping my hands sorry Monica is confirming that she see it. <laughs> and it's perfect. Oh, thank you, Monica. Okay, I'm gonna do it then like this if you are. Also, Cyprus can see you very well. Hi, and Cyprus. Nav. Oh, and Nav. And Israel, see you as well. And Nav, you are not bored by now? <laughs> Etty from Israel, see you as well. Hi, Etty. Okay, so you can see that I'm filling my pocket watch with some smaller interesting elements and I will add some more heavy body gel and you know the heavy body gel is basically pigmentless. It means that it will dry completely uh, transparent. So don't be afraid to use it. Osman asking if the gel dry clear yes yes exactly this is what i'm saying right now the heavy body gel is completely uh, transparent when it dries because it has no pigment in it you know as opposed to the gesso that has a white acrylic in it uh, the medium gel is transparent yes so we have this nice little pocket watch here it's gonna dry while we are continuing with building the composition and i just add one more we send out qualities to see you create yay thank you and the lad is asking for a link for the body gel <laughs> lad okay Okay, that's it. Let's continue. We will put it here to dry. And I will try to organize just a little bit so I can focus here. Okay. Ruth said she missed your uh, tip. Your poster. Mm -hmm, yeah. The corona hit us hard. I miss teaching too. Okay, so let's see how do we continue with this. Uh, yes, I have this um, Mechanical Dreams uh, chipboard and I want just to make my composition a bit more interesting. So I'm going to add some of those um, beneath, the comp beneath my photo. 
and maybe this one here too. I believe that Natalie is providing you all the links if you want. Okay, so I think we have most of the composition by now. We will only do some fine tuning after we wear it because it is uh, late and I started late. Okay. I must say that it's already beautiful and it looks <laughs> so easy when you do it. Mm. Well, I don't want to say it is easy and then, you know, maybe if you are struggling, you will feel like uh, I don't know what I'm saying, but I can tell you that uh, you just need to do it freely and don't think too much, you know, it's just a canvas and it's just flowers and nothing can really happen. So just experiment and, and do it and you will see that it is easy if you are not afraid of it. Okay, I'm going to adhere the elements now and then we'll see how we continue. I want to give you all uh, some basic tip that I really um, do in all of my projects and it's to take some chipboards and cut it to a small pieces and then uh, use it in order to create volume in your pieces. So I'm not just gluing the paper, the flowers uh, as they are. I'm going to put some chipboards beneath them and make them pop, you know, to be more, more layered, more volume. Okay, so don't panic. I'm gonna move everything now because I know how it, how it's gonna be. And I will start to adhere my elements. I'm going to take another piece of chipboard because I want it to pop. Monica is asking, do you use the resin frames or the model or the molds? Mm, I'm using the molds, this one right here, okay? This mold. When I got those in my DT package, I was thrilled because I love frames. And since I got it, I, I think on a weekly basis, I am creating more and more. <coughs> and Lynette said that it was a, a great tip, the one you did before. Which one, which tip? With the chipboards? Yeah, so even here I'm adding one more chipboard. And you know, by adding those, you are creating air right here. And then if I want to add more elements beneath my, el my already glued elements, I can easily do so. And I have no problem with it. So, another piece right here. Elad is asking for a one-on-one -on -one training. <laughs> Okay, lad, tomorrow, I promise. I'm gonna bring my canvas with me to Nicosia. Okay. Betty loves the molds. Also, the next love them. It's a new fab. Yeah. It, it was mine too. Okay, I'm gonna place it here, although I want to wait with the glue because I want to add a piece of paper right there, but I'm just marking its place so I will know where to put it. <coughs> Okay, 
manual one here okay it's a good time to put some chipboards right here and you know what even okay i will put it there oh this one this one this one is gorgeous yeah okay we are getting there let's put some leaves and remember what i told you about having two-thirds of your project covered then the leaves and all the things that are in a delicate way stretching your compositions are just great this is the chipboards and Oh, I forgot to put this one. Amanda says that it looks like you are fast forward. Fast you look, forward? You yeah. Look so fast. Ah, okay. <laughs> because I got stressed. I see it's quarter to 10, and I said I will be finished by 10. But you know, if you will stay, then I will stay too. <laughs> no problem okay you see by cutting the chipboard in the middle i was able to use it twice and not just once so if your chipboard is anyway being covered by other elements don't forget to to cut it and just uh, enjoy the rest of it in some other parts yes this one okay now uh, the reasonable thing to do is to use it like this because this is how it was produced but i don't want to have this edge right here you see it it's not interesting and we always want to finish our composition with um, smaller elements so I don't want to lose this part, which is gorgeous, you see? So I'm gonna adhere it upside down. Also, I think I will be using the medium gel because it's a bit uh, heavier. Okay. Imab is thanking you for sharing all those tips. Yep, that's why I'm here. Okay. Okay, like so. Yep, we are getting there. Okay, if you see that you have an unbalanced um, project, like I'm having here, because I put too, um, too much elements that they are big, and here I don't have enough. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, from there but if you are having this situation this is exactly why I'm using the chipboards I will just put more chipboards here and I will balance things up so I'm just stacking it here no one will know and yeah great Also here we are having the same issue. I will add some chipboards on the left or as well. Right here. I can also move those for just a second. And you know I I love to use medium gel or this tacky glue because you have the the you have the time to change your mind to play with your composition and if i would have used for example a hot glue gun then it, it would be stuck by now it was a bit it would it would have been a problem so it, it gives me the opportunity to be more free in do mistakes i know i can 
easily fix those if I have some problems. Sabia wants to live in your head for one day. Sabia, I say just take a flight, come here to Cyprus and we will create together and have a fabulous time. And you will be in my studio, not in my head. It's better, right? Okay. So here, one last thing. <coughs> okay. Yes. Okay. It looks it looks pretty good by now. And now I want to continue for the next stage. Okay, um, yes, let me see what I want to do now. Okay, what I want to do now is to add the chipboards. As I told you in my original piece right here, I was using the steampunk bloom, but I don't have those anymore, so I'm gonna use just some other chipboards. And why I'm using them? is um, I, I don't like the busy, I, I want to make a smooth transition between the busy part and the empty parts. So I'm gonna use some small and delicate elements and they will help us to have a better transition. Not so, you know, um, bulky or, anyway, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. So I'm just going to put some, some delicate chipboards here and there. Right. Mm, like so. And maybe also beneath the, <coughs> the paper. So I'm going to cut it a bit. You know, like so, like it's coming from the inside and we have these interesting things that are going there. If I have any questions? No. So Anne is saying that it looks amazing. Thank you. Chapeau. Okay. Okay, now what? Maybe we we'll add someone, something like this. Okay. Okay. Prima is asking what is the meaning of your gorgeous tattoo? Oh, this tattoo. Uh, it's a song. It calls uh, If It Be Your Will. Uh, let's see if someone knows who's. who's Whose song is it? I will wait a minute and then I will tell you the whole story. Okay. Is it not? Anybody is answering? Okay, I think that we are almost done with the elements. I just put one more here. Okay, I don't want to, <coughs> um, I think I w maybe I would have proceeded just a bit more, but we are on a, uh, on a limited time and it does look good, so I think I can stop right here. But I do want to add some strings, some scissor strings. In general, the more different materials you will add, the better. So I'm adding also scissor string. You can add laces instead or, or pieces of delicate fabrics or something. This one, this is a scissor string. Okay. And it's just, again, a delicate transition from our busy parts to our empty parts. So 
and just um, Mikavchechet. How do you say Mikavchechet in Arabic? Arabic. You don't know? Well, I'm folding, you know, this, and then I'm putting some glue. And I will take a pencil or something and stuff it here inside. What, you don't see the... I don't anymore? see the corner. Oh, the corner? Okay. All right. And also on this side, hope you can see it. Okay. Do what you can do. We are almost done with building our composition. Oh, 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 I almost forgot. I wanted to add some sentiment. I'm going to go with the same sentiment I went last time. Let me see. Yeah, love this life. You gotta love this life, right? This is again from the Night Sweet collection. Do you see the comments? Mm -hmm. uh, squeezing it, is how you ah, say it. squeezing. Yes. Or oh, twisting it. But you know, like a church, it's not completely squeezing. It's, I don't, I don't smushing. have it. Smush, smushing it or something. Yeah. Again, here also, I have this sentiment right here. I want to distress it a bit with the... Uh, is it called maple, maple polish or um, well you know it's just for for the nails yes this one <laughs> okay and then i want to uh, i will add it to the right here to the corner and i will not forget to adhere the frame as well we didn't adhere it before. Christine can't believe how quickly this work of art came together. <laughs> yes, that was quick. Oh my god, it's 5 to 10. I hope you are not going to abandon me because we do need like approximately 15 more minutes for the colors. Uh, but we do have a drying session right now. And one minute. If it wasn't a live session, I would have probably leave the project for the night or for a few hours, but now I will speed the process with a heating tool. And when we will add the paints, I will do it gently to not smudge the glue or wet it too much. So telling you, don't stress it. <laughs> you are perfect. Thank you, girls. Dominique from France. Dominique. Okay, okay. Christine is saying that you are doing a fabulous job. I have to say something, because now we don't have time for oh. it. Uh, and I was leaving this element right here in its original rusty color but but and this is a big but I don't like to add some element in different color in just one place if I would have add more elements uh, with this color then it would be balanced and it would be and it would would have looked great but because we are only putting it here, the eye is going to focus right on this element and we will not have this flow that we want to achieve. So we have two options. The number one option is to add some white gesso on top of this element and to blend it with the others. And this is what we are going to do. But just the sake of it, and because anyway we are waiting for the project to dry, 
I do want to show you some cool effect or something. Um, if hmm? the one that is left is the white flowers in the top right die cut. This one. If you are talking about this one, this one is a chipboard, and it's uh, it, it's a piece of wood. You buy it just just as you see it. Um, everyone is saying that they are with you till the end. Oh yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna speak so much more now. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. We're gonna we're gonna finish it soon. Okay. So what I wanted to show you, yeah, we are going to blend this item with. Am I focused? Yeah. Uh, we are going to blend it with a white gesso, but just for the sake of it, I want to show you something. If I would have add some uh, elements in the same color to my project, first of all, it would have changed the the project completely, you know, by the energy and the color and the vibes. But I do want to show you that if I would have done it, then it would, would have been balanced and not just one color that is all of a sudden different from the rest of the piece. So you can see here that if I would have add more elements in different places and maybe even the color that I will add later would be this um, orange uh, rust color then it would be much more balanced okay I will let you see it up close because it is an interesting experiment to see as you can see it changed the work completely but if I'm taking all of these elements out and just leaving this item here, you will automatically see it when you look at it. Okay, I spoke enough. <laughs> now let's uh, change it. All the same is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Audrey. If I would have, if I had more time, maybe we would have changed it a bit and put all these orange and yellow flowers but we don't have so much time so i'm going to add some gesso anyway our project is being dried in the meantime so this is finna bear heavy white gesso right here yeah gonna take some and I will dab it in the axis here I don't want it to be too bulky Isabel loves it just as much with the darker colors mm. okay and now it is blended nicely in the project so make it back and when are you coming you want, uh, oh, actually I am coming sooner than you think I'm gonna come hopefully in two weeks and I'm going to get to be vaccinated hopefully uh, but you know we are going to be isolated for two weeks so I'm not gonna be sociali socialing how do you say socialing? Yeah. But maybe after the vaccine, who knows? To have a real hug from you. Okay. I think we are good to go and proceed to the colors. Okay. One more minute. Okay. Okay. So 
adding the colors is a great opportunity to enhance the focal point which is our photo and it's important to choose colors that will complement the project so choose a color you have already worked with and don't bring a new one all of a sudden just like we discussed uh, a minute ago uh, and let me just clear my table for a minute also think so. Because on one side it's gorgeous and very beautiful and wishing you luck with the vaccine. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna need it. Okay. Okay, okay, let's continue. Now, colors, yeah. Uh, I love uh, using the watercolors since you can layer them and control better of the color flow so the most important tip I can give you is to keep your shaded area which means the inner uh, parts of the composition as dark as possible and the lighter area you know like this one here and this one here light that is why I am adding the colors next to the shaded area yes and dragging them out you will see in a minute Oh my, okay, don't judge. This is a, a horrible way to preserve your tin. Yeah. Do you want to judge? Okay. So I'm gonna use the Classics Confection Set by Prima. And I want to bring back some of the gray that we have in the photo. It's also very dramatic and you can layer them into a very dark um, gray inside. Okay, because we don't have a lot of time, I'm gonna only focus on one color, the gray, which will look great. But just for general idea, we could have gone also with some greens that would have been fabulous too. So let's do this. My palette is so so dirty, so I'm gonna use the table. I'm gonna take some gray and some black to make it darker. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm going to get into the inside of my project of my composition oh man i forgot to seal my project with medium gel hmm okay let's see how it goes if you see if in this in, in now in this phase it's very good to seal your project with medium gel which as i told you before is completely transparent and if you do so then the paper and the items that can absorb the paint will just let it flow better but again we don't really have time so let's just proceed as we are and note that i told you so have this tip in mind okay and again I, i'm making it just a bit more just a bit darker in inside of the project as you can see here and then with the water I'm dragging it to the other parts as well okay I will do it in the white area so you can see it better any questions no okay 
Okay, let it flow, let it flow. Yeah. See how it's flowing and we love it and we are not afraid of it yep okay this is the most interesting and expressive part in the wok now before I'm gonna flip it and do it in the other side as well I want to just give it a, a bit of a dry I wish I had water. I wish. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> okay, I'm flipping it and I'm gonna do the same right here. And you can repeat this process again and again until you are happy. You can dry it and then add some more colors uh, especially inside when where you want it to be um, shaded it adds drama and interest okay I told you I would be gentle, but I'm actually really, really not because I'm always carried away when I get to this part. And what can I do? What can I say? Yay, thank you. Okay, just a bit more on the sides and we are done. Again, if I had more time and probably after our session, I, I will continue just a bit, but I would have given it some additional layer because I do want it to be more dramatic and the, the, the more layer and the more and the darker you will have it in the inside, uh, of the composition right here will just make your photo pop and make it much more interesting and dramatic so I'm gonna stop uh, in right now but have in mind that we would have been able to proceed as much as we want okay that, that the, picture from. the picture is from Pinterest I think. Oh, and it, it's a nice question. I have to tell you something. I have to show you. Hmm? I have to show you something. I was playing with the idea of maybe twisting and changing a bit and, and to do another uh, some other composition. I wanted to maybe show you uh, how we can change the palette if we want. So I just took the original photo and I manipulate it with using some, you know, editing tools like Prisma and Snapseed. And I changed it to black and white and to pink and some sepia. And then you can play, you know, and create so many different uh, layouts, so many different pieces. So always remember that you can change the photo Lynette is thanking you for sharing your process and everything that looks so fast when you do it. <laughs> yeah. Audrey is sending love, love, love. Love.
love, love, love. Love to you too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we have two more things and we are done. Um, gesso. Gesso, gesso, gesso. Yeah. Okay. So I'm adding gesso with the dry brush technique in order to unify all items together. You will see in a minute how harmonious it looks when you do when you do it. So I'm trying to not use a too wet too much, you know, not to have a wet brush. So I'm um, um, dabbing it on a piece of a paper towel, and then I'm taking some gesso and again. I'm not loading my brush like so, let me show you, not like so too much, but in a gentle way, I'm going to tap here to remove the excess, and then I will just start to mm, have some delicate strokes, how do you say Lila <laughs> um, yeah. To oh, I, I, I will just use some light and gentle strokes on top of all my elements and okay. can you see just like so okay on top of everything dry brush dry brush technique yeah exactly amanda is here on you helping with all the creative <laughs> thank you amanda i'm gonna keep you with me okay and it's just you know it it makes the the whole walk much more delicate and bring light to all the elements together okay so done also this one and are you excited because we are going to our um, towards our last detail and then we will close and I will say oh my god I forgot to do so many things but you will forgive me because as we said it's our my first live right uh, okay so i have here some white uh you know what no maybe i will just um, i'll have just uh, okay i will take the gesso and I put some of it here <laughs> yeah. okay I'm gonna take some gesso and I will add some water and mix until I will have it more in a fluid kind of um, state okay I just ruined my shirt my new shirt thank you will I ever learn that creations requires some old t-shirts I guess no okay so I'm gonna take just a I'm gonna cover my photo because I don't want it to get uh, splashes of colors and I'm gonna just tap like so yeah. we now can't believe it's your first slide and everyone is flattering you you're a pro <laughs> you are way too kind okay but at least i didn't mess up like <laughs> like jonathan and noam predicted <laughs> you're saying that you're amazing and it's 
so common voice. Common voice. This is the first. This is the first one. <laughs> okay. Betty loved this one. That's it. Yay. We made it. Can you believe it? Here it is. We have a new stunning layout and this is the original one. Yep. Quite the same, yeah. Okay. That's it. So what now? We're going to say goodbye. Let's see if anyone has any questions before we are saying our goodbyes. Baby, any question? No. Nothing? So that's it. We're going to say our goodbyes now. Thank you so, so, so much for joining me. Uh, you know, if you don't know, I have a YouTube channel with my name and you can find there a lot of um, tutorials and of course you can find me on my Facebook and on Instagram. Just look for my name and I'll be there. Thank you so, so much for joining, for commenting for supporting, for loving, and I will see you in my next live. Bye-bye.